technology. One small step for a man, but one giant leap for... Oh! Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly, and welcome to the only technology expo I've ever been to where you can experience what it feels like to bounce on the moon, all in the aid of promoting sensors and USB connectors. This is SeaTech in Japan, and I warn you, anything can happen in the next half hour. It's a show like no other, and we'll bring you the very best and the most bizarre tech we can find. We'll hit the road in some high-tech transport and hit the dining table with some high-spec specs. Oh, not forgetting the smartest sushi, this side of Blade Runner. All that plus the latest tech news and the very best of the web in Webscape. So, here we are on the show floor. SeaTech has just opened its doors. And this is a really exciting tech event because unlike some of the trade shows that we go to around the world, here we're not being hit over the head by just product launches. Here you actually get to see the research which is still going on and which may change the world sometime in the next decade or so. Walk the eight halls here and you'll see Japan's love of tech writ large. Japanese culture embraces it and the people here are quite happy to attach it to anything and everything. In fact, many of the devices that go on sale here are so particularly Japanese that they never leave the country. However, the kit making the biggest splash here at SeaTech this year is something that is very much catching the eyes of the whole world. And here's LJ Rich to take a look. Thanks, Ben. Well, one of the undoubted stars of the show is behind me. It's NTT Docomo's translation glasses. And look, people are actually queuing up to have just a few minutes to play. A lot of these trade show attendees go abroad as part of their work, and chances are they'll also need to eat out while they're away. So this is a scenario familiar to many a traveller. You can't understand the menu. And the idea is that these translating glasses are going to turn the Japanese that I see in front of me into tasty English that I can read and understand. These glasses will recognise the Japanese characters and give me a translation on the fly. Though there's going to be a difference between cultural translation and literal translation, so some dishes might look a little less appetising to the discerning gourmand and it does kind of work. However, it requires a very fast connection in order to be able to get that processing to you before you can order. <laughs> That's because this is a data-hungry system involving real-time image manipulation and sending live video to the cloud. Now, because of all that high-end processing, understanding the world around us is quite possibly the last great hurdle for computing. And while LJ's glasses interpret what we see, this thing is trying to make sense of what we do. The smartphone inside this prototype frame is recognising gestures, allowing you to scroll the screen without actually touching it. And unlike Samsung's Galaxy S4, which does detect your fingers as they hover just above the display, you can waggle your fingers anywhere near this device and it will get the message. The secret is this tiny ultrasound chip which creates a sound field around the phone and then measures the distance and direction of disturbances caused by your digits. It works in three dimensions, allowing it to understand complex gestures. And if it is taken on by manufacturers, the chip will actually be built into the device instead of being stuck on that nasty external frame. After all, who wants a frame in this day and age? Certainly not LJ. Well, you know me, Spen, I'll watch anything. And like most of us these days, the screen takes second place to the content. But despite this, Sharp is determined to make us fall back in love with display tech, showing off new concept screens like this frameless IGZO LCD. This is a big deal because traditional TVs need beveled edges. Those edges are where the device sends electrical charges to control pixels as if TVs weren't thin enough.
And the downsizing doesn't stop at TV frames. Honda's minimalist prototype, the Unicub, shrinks personal transport down to this compact package. Okay. The two-wheeled self-stabilizing stool is less than a meter tall and driven by leaning. Takes a bit of getting used to. Actually, this isn't bad. But the two-hour battery life makes the Unicub a little impractical for exploring even a small trade show like this. But that's all right, it's still at concept stage. There are fewer than 20 of these prototypes in existence right now, but personal transport is gathering momentum. One of the reasons we're seeing mobility devices here at SeaTech is that Japan really does have to think about keeping its population mobile. People here are living longer than anywhere else on the planet, and so they really do have to concentrate on keeping elderly people mobile and in their own homes, possibly into their second century on the planet. Hence the very Segway-like scooter called the Winglet, named after the winged sandals of the god Hermes. And by the way, this one being ridden Saul's hands. Anyway, more from SeaTech later in the programme. First, we'll take a look at this week's tech news. And by the way, check out the winglet riding cameraman. Take that, Top Gear. Samsung has released the world's first curved display smartphone. Similar to some curved TVs, the Galaxy Round features a 5.7 inch rigid OLED display that has a dip down its centre. Samsung says the design fits better around your face when making calls and it allows you to roll it about to control the device. Don't get your wallets out just yet though, the phone is initially only launching in South Korea and only in one colour, luxury brown. Researchers at entertainment giant Disney have invented an algorithm that makes objects on touchscreens feel three-dimensional. The haptic feedback, as it's known, is produced from varying the voltage at different points across a flat surface, creating diverse degrees of frictional force and fooling your fingers into believing they're touching a textured surface. That texture information is captured using sensors similar to Xbox's Kinect. The aim is to enhance user interaction by getting all touchy-feely with on-screen content. US design company Nest has unveiled the very latest innovation in smoke alarms. The Nest Protect is designed to add a few IQ points to the traditional smoke sensor. Complete with a smartphone app, the device speaks a warning if there's just a tiny bit of smoke. Heads up, there's smoke in the dining room. And unleashes the full fanfare for more serious fires. Finally, burning that toast won't cause a complete evacuation. Robots have taken a few steps closer to moving like us and our four-legged friends. Meet Atlas, created by robotics firm Boston Dynamics and funded by the Pentagon. Atlas can cross rocky terrain and can balance on one leg, even when you hit it with a heavy weight. How unkind. The Wildcat has also been unleashed with a noisy and slightly terrifying buzz from its onboard low-tech go-kart engine, this quadruped gallops at up to 16 miles per hour. Both have been developed with the battlefield in mind. Oh no, we have a crisis. I was about to whip us all up a spot of sushi, but no wasabi. What's a chef to do? Well, fortunately, SeaTech has served up the solution. You grab your fridge side remote control, locate the wasabi button, and upload your wasabi requirements to the cloud. At which point, all of your family and friends are notified of this wasabi vacuum, and hopefully, one of them will pop to the shops on the way home, and your horseradish based disaster will be averted. Actually, I prefer my dining to be a little less frantic. And if I'm honest, with the cooking done by someone else. So, time to take a break from the show and go in search of a spot of Zen lunch. Not, of course, that anything here is devoid of a touch of technology, including the food. In a normal sushi restaurant, the food passes by on conveyor belts like this. You choose the dishes you're interested in and you're charged by the plate at the ends. However, here, if you'd like to make a special order, you swipe through the menu on the tablets and give it a couple of minutes and your food arrives 
by high-speed conveyor belt. Which makes this an almost waiterless place to eat. As soon as the order is received in the kitchen, it can be prepared and loaded for launch. Even behind the scenes, this restaurant is smarter than your average eatery. The kitchen computer monitors how many people are eating at any one time and calculates which new dishes and how many need to be added to the emptying conveyor. As you finish each plate, you dispose of it in this slot, sending it whizzing to its soapy end and automatically increasing your bill at the same time. And as an added incentive to keep on munching, every five plates sent down the chute triggers a game on the tablet for which you could just win a prize. Mm, what an unexpected treat. Talking of which, here are some more morsels we picked up at SeaTech. These shows can sometimes look like a bit of a tech smorgasbord, or maybe that should be bento box. But sometimes there are themes that do drive many of the exhibits, like driving. Nissan was back this year with an updated version of its self-driving cars. And in a future where you're whisked down the road without touching the controls, the company is now considering reinventing the wheel. The steering wheel, that is. If fully autonomous technology is available, what kind of human-machine interaction, interaction is the best system for a human driver? Without steering, without gas pedal, or with joystick, or just voice? What's the right answer? That's a very difficult question. Autonomous vehicles have been gaining traction recently. Well, you'd hope so, really, wouldn't you? But for the driver who still wants to be captain of the cockpit, here's a couple of devices to make sure you're paying full attention to the road ahead. You certainly won't doze off in Alps Electric's car of the future. It tracks your eyes, your breath, and in fact, all of your vital signs to check that you're not nodding off. Fujitsu has a similar, if simpler, idea. A heartbeat monitor you clip to your ear. If your pulse dips to a more mellow rhythm, an alarm on the associated smartphone app brings you back from the brink. Incidentally, the name of that app? Well, in English, it is Footsteps of the Sheep. That's Footsteps of the Sheep. In Japanese, I'm sure that makes a lot more sense. Now, one thing that is increasingly common in the modern car is the heads-up display, a way to superimpose your speed and directions onto the road ahead. Like several models already in production, Mazda's virtual instrument panel projects and reflects information straight into your eyeline. It's a nice idea, and my eyeline doesn't have to drop quite as much to see the speed or the directions as it would in a normal car. Although I have to say, as soon as I shift my position just a little bit, I can't see the display anymore because the angle's wrong. And I guess this is really just a placeholder for a time when your entire windscreen becomes your display. And that'll be really exciting. And that's exactly what Pioneer's showing off just across the hall, where LJ Rich is back in the driving seat. Yes, it's nice to have a sit down, though before you rush to the showroom, Sven, this is just a concept, not a working model. Feeding drivers relevant information is the whole point of a heads-up display. In this case, the entire windscreen receives graphics from a projector on top of the dashboard. Even though data from the sat-nav was displayed across my whole field of vision, I didn't feel overloaded with information. But Pioneer has also added a slightly unconventional extra element of touch to its concept driving experience. A vibrating steering wheel that lets you know when you're getting a bit close to something. This extra sensory touchy-feely take on hazard perception felt a bit too much like playing a video game when it vibrated, but I can see how it could be a useful alert if other people venture into your blind spots. Now, it's fair to say that once you do have sat-nav in your car, getting from A to B becomes as easy as spelling the address correctly. Shame the joys of GPS don't usually extend into buildings, where the satellite signal is often blocked by all that concrete. And that means finding your way around a trade show or any other unfamiliar space is a case of, well, indoor orienteering. 
Unless, that is, you own a device fitted with the sensors I'm currently wearing on my wrist. Alps Electric has combined an accelerometer, gyroscope and compass to accurately measure which way you're pointing and the number of steps that you walk in that direction. As long as you give it a starting point, it can then work out precisely where you are on its map. Now, the coolest thing about this is how it works out which floor you're on because this sensor can measure the air pressure so precisely that it can tell your altitude to within about eight centimeters, which actually means not only can it tell which floor you're on, but if you look at the air pressure figure on this tablet here, you'll see that it can tell the difference between your head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Wherever you do walk, however, you must make sure you walk there in style. Right, LG? Yes, I'm all for personal improvement, but years of carrying my camera kit around has made my posture less than perfect. Cue this device from Omron aimed squarely at the Japanese market. Like the indoor sat-nav, this beautiful walking dongle has a small accelerometer inside that connects via Bluetooth to a mobile. Walk 10 steps and your walking style is analysed based on those sensor readings. Looks frivolous, but its inventors say the app should help to improve your posture. This device reflects the growing trend of sensor-based data analysis and feedback. Flamingo, duck or struggling penguin will display specific exercises tailored to your personal result. I did this test four times, walking a little differently each time, but every time... Oh, no! Penguin. Personally, I think penguins are underrated, so keep on waddling, LJ. And here's something that might not correct your posture. Oh, <laughs> But it should stop you from, well, throwing your back out. Anyone who has to repeatedly lift heavy weights, take a look at this. This is a 20 kilogram weight, and this is a muscle suit. Ready? Hope my osteopath's not watching this. Oh! <laughs> That's weird. It's basically a pneumatic backpack which straightens and bends these supports on your upper legs by inflating special tubes. The strange blue dongle near my chin is the hands-free controller, which, if you're not careful, will bring you upright at a rate of knots. And if you're properly trained, you get to wear the red suit. That's the full body contraption with arm and leg support that's allowing this chap to lift 50 kilograms. And just to prove that it's the suit doing the work, this is what happens when you switch it off. And just in case you don't have your own power assisted suit and you actually need to get fit and learn the proper technique, here comes Kate Russell to expand on last week's lot of fitness apps in Webscape. Yes, Spencer, that is taking fitness gadgets to the extreme. But the growing craze for activity trackers has created a booming market in third-party apps that add extra features like tracking workouts, nutrition and weight loss. RunKeeper is free for iPhone and Android and links to both the Jawbone and Fitbit bands that we looked at last week, with premium upgrades for more in-depth stats. Lots of popular apps link to MyFitnessPal, a diet tracker that's totally revolutionised the way I think about food. It's fun and easy to use, just scan and add your intake as you go. It's available free on all smartphone platforms and has really boosted my motivation to eat a healthier diet. I like the way you move. If you're working on weight loss, the Withings app links to many popular resources and is really nice to use. It's free on iPhone and Android and has its own range of hardware extras, including Wi-Fi scales that measure your body fat percentage, heart rate and ambient air quality, as well as your weight. But you don't need a tracking device to use these apps. They're great motivational tools in their own right. What you will need is a sports holder to keep your smartphone safely attached to your body and a decent pair of headphones. 
These Bluetooth exercise freak headphones from Denon mean no tangled cables and they have their own smartphone app for logging workouts and nutrition. Make sure you charge them after every workout though, as running out of juice when you're running is really annoying. These Aftershocks headphones use bone conduction to deliver sound, which leaves your ears open to alert you to hazards, a really important safety feature when exercising in urban areas. When it comes to incentives, most of the fitness and motivational apps I've tested have failed. Sorry, but I grew out of badges, cups and squeaky screen pets when I was about 10. It's the apps that gamify exercise that I've got most out of, like Zombies Run, which plays out an ongoing drama in between tracks from your favourite playlist. Number five, we had a zombie attack last night and we're low on uh, everything. We need whatever you can find. Get going. If you're not up to running, just walking a bit more can have a huge impact on your overall health and well-being. This early game for Android sets the world around you up as the playing space for a huge multiplayer game similar to Capture the Flag. You choose your side, the Enlightened or the Resistance, then walk around collecting energy sources and attempting to take over any bases you come across. You'll be surprised how quickly those recommended 10,000 steps a day will add up when your mind is absorbed in a game. Now you have your fitness under control, it's time to take your Twitter account in hand. Tame.it lets you see at a glance the top hashtags, users and links in your timeline. One of the most annoying things about trying to quit a service is searching around for the right page to delete your account. We've all been there, I'm sure. Me perhaps more than most as I've been doing Webscape for more than 10 years. Some helpful soul has started gathering all of the most deeply hidden and impossible to find exit pages at justdelete.me. Now, go forth and unapply. <laughs> Yahoo Mail has had a major facelift this week, most noticeably introducing rich themes inspired by 24 different Flickr photographs. The redesign is geared specifically towards a better mobile experience that's reflected in the web client as well. Yahoo is also upping storage to one terabyte and making premium features like pop access and mail forwarding free to all users, with an ad-free client available for $50 a year. The new look Yahoo Mail is available for the web, iOS, Android and Windows 8 tablets. Kate Russell's Webscape. I've clawed myself away from CTEC for a little while to take a broader view of things. And here it is. Tokyo, as seen from the latest addition to its skyline, the Tokyo Skytree. We're currently 450 metres up, a pretty impressive view of a pretty impressive city, I'm sure you'll agree. But that's it for now from Click in Japan. We'll actually be back here in a few weeks' time. In the meantime, you can watch parts of this programme again online. bbc.co.uk slash click is our website. And you can get in touch via email, click at bbc.co.uk, or you can get hold of us on Twitter, Facebook and Google Plus too. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>